G'day legends, I'm back again and today I have one of my good mates and one of the original expats of Medellin. He moved here 13 years ago, can you imagine that? And today he's going to help me out with a video we've put together for you guys called the Medellin Checklist. We go through the things that you need to do before getting to Medellin. A lot of us think about our life when we get to Medellin and we don't prepare. But there are certain things that you should do before you get down here and we're going to go through that so that it makes your move a little bit easier. With that said, let's move into number one, banking. Banking is boring. Banking is boring even in the US, even though the US has a lot of new websites, new apps that you could use, very interactive, user friendly. Banks put a lot of money into this. In Colombia, they're still stuck maybe 10 years behind, maybe even more for some banks. So you definitely want to figure this part out before you get to Colombia. And there's some little hacks that you can organize that's gonna save you a lot of money once you get here. For example, get a credit card that doesn't have any international transaction fees. So when you come here, you can use it everywhere. They give you the exact market rate so you're not being ripped off and being charged all types of commission. And also there's no transaction fees on top of things like ATM fees. I just had an ATM card from Australia when I first got here and I used it everywhere and I didn't realize how much it was charging me. So it would charge me 5% straight up transaction fee and then the ATM fee and then any conversion fees too. If I took out $100, it might end up $15 per transaction. Yeah. Multiply that over like 10 transactions and it can cost you a lot of money. So do a bit of research with your own banks, wherever you're from and find a credit card that doesn't have any transaction fees and find a debit card that reimburses your ATM fees. One example of that is the Charles Schwab account, but I'm sure there's many others. On a business level, you want to transfer money down to Colombia. You can run a business transferring money through apps like Wise, Zoom, Remitly, but you'll reach caps. And once you get to those caps, you're gonna to wanna to look at maybe business accounts in the United States that can transfer money over to Colombia. A lot of the traditional banks have international wire fees that are pretty high, anywhere from $20 to $60 per transaction. The one that I use is Mercury. Mercury has zero international wire fees and it has a very easy to use app and website. I'd do some research if I were you. I did extensive research and Mercury worked best for me and what I needed to do here in Colombia. And also when it comes to transferring money to people in other countries from your home bank account. So if I wanna transfer money to someone in Colombia with a Colombian account, what I use is an app called Wise. There's also other options like Remitly, but Wise is what I recommend. For a transfer of say $100, you only get charged between three to $5. That's the app that I've found to have the lowest fees and also that offers the best currency conversion rate. So look into that and make sure you have that downloaded before you get here. Number two on the list, make sure everything is renewed before you get here. So passport, credit card, driver's license. If you'd have those things here and you suddenly need to make a purchase or the cop pulls you over and it's expired, you might have a lot of issues. Sort that out before you get here. It's gonna save you a lot of stress. Number three is visas. Make sure you know what type of visa you need to get to stay here long term. First of all, for anybody, well, most countries anyway, Australia, US, UK, etc., you can come into the country and you can stay for 90 days immediately. You'll just basically have to fill in a form online. It's called Check MIG, it takes about five minutes. And then once you're in immigration, they'll stamp the passport for you. 90 days, boom, you're good to go. If you wanna stay longer, if you like the country, which you probably will, uh, <laughs> just go online and you fill out another form. Usually allow about two weeks for this. Once you fill out this form, they'll issue another 90 days. So you can get up to 180 days or six months per year that you can stay in the country. If you want to stay longer, you'll need a visa. We're not going to cover too much information about visas in this, but just touching on the most popular visas, that's a student visa for anyone who wants to come here and study anything. It doesn't have to be Spanish, anything in an approved university or school. The digital nomad visa, you just need to show some income and show that you're making your income from outside of Colombia. The investment visa, if you invest, I believe the figure is about $75,000 in real estate in Colombia. If you're a retiree who can show uh, retirement pension payments or disability payments or veterans payments, you can get a visa. And the final one, which is also very popular, is the business visa. If you can show that you have an international business bringing in X amount of money per year and you can show that you're gonna hire Colombian employment, blah, 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 you can get a visa. Familiarize yourself, know which one you wanna get. Sometimes you need to gather quite a few documents. You need to engage a visa lawyer. We recommend that. So leave adequate time before preparing this. What is adequate time? At least one month. 
things work very slow here in Colombia. You don't want to be leaving it to you know a week before, then realizing you need all these documents you never thought about before, becoming illegal, having to pay a fine, getting barred from the country, I don't know. In terms of COVID, if you are vaccinated, you just need to show your vaccination card and you can come in. If you're not vaccinated, also not an issue, you just need a test. Number four, rentals. Now, before you get to Colombia, some of you, this might be your second, third, fourth, fifth, or m you've been here multiple times, you already know the area that you're going to want to live in. But for those of you that don't, what I usually suggest to my friends that are coming for the first time, I tell them to get on Airbnb and I tell them the three main neighborhoods that they're probably going to want to check out like El Poblado, Laureles, Envigado maybe, and check the prices and see the apartments and the availability within their budget, etc. That's a good start. I like using Airbnb because of the fact that it's safe as well. There are a lot of scams in Colombia, real estate scams, targeting foreigners that are coming here because they know that there's a need for foreigners renting apartments long term without having to go through Airbnb where the prices are inflated. Those scams will take your information. They have a great website. You talk to a real person. You're exchanging information via WhatsApp. They'll even send you their chamber of commerce letter, rental agreement, pictures of their ID as the business owner, etc., to make you feel safe and then tell you that you have to pay half of the down payment, which could be a thousand dollars, let's say. You send it over and by the time you get here, there is no company, there is no apartment. The apartment might even exist. It might even be for rent, but you go and talk to the actual owner and the owner says, I don't know that person. I never gave him authority. This has happened countless times to people that we know personally, so don't fall for that. That's why I choose Airbnb as the first engagement with Colombia <laughs> as far as rentals go. Furthermore, if you do want to get maybe an unfurnished or a furnished apartment off of an app, you're gonna wanna ha have someone feed on the street here helping you with that to validate these companies that do offer this or maybe go with a tried and proven company for some of the other expats. And you can find that information through groups on Facebook, through forums online, etc. We've actually already recorded a video where we go very in depth on how to find the best affordable apartments here and also how not to fall for scams, how to look for scams. So make sure you subscribe for that. We'll have that coming in the following weeks. A lot of these places to find the best deals, you need to deal with local real estate agents. That means you need to know Spanish, right? Without Spanish, you're not gonna get very far. So if you don't know Spanish, what can you do, Andy? Definitely hire a personal assistant. I speak Spanish fluently and I have a personal assistant. I have an accountant. They both speak English and Spanish. They have helped me out tremendously. Even though I'm a fluent Spanish speaker and I'm Colombian, there are things that I didn't understand. I didn't know how to deal with that they helped me and walked me through and they continue. I've been here 13 years and I still have the same accountant and the same personal assistant. They're amazing. If you want more information on personal assistance, make sure to fill out the form below and we'll get back to you on that. These personal assistants, they have a network of people that they know. So as soon as you wanna, hey, I want a personal trainer, or I wanna whatever, anything, they yeah. automatically have their web and they're all vetted. It's not like you're blindly finding someone from the internet and maybe being taken advantage of. The next one, is health insurance. Health insurance is, is big for a lot of people, especially if you are like me, 40 and over, and you plan on living here. You want to start thinking about whether you want to retain your health insurance in the United States, or if you want to also get health insurance here in Colombia. Colombia has some of the greatest facilities in the world and also doctors in the world for certain treatments, surgeries, not only for plastic surgery, but for other surgical procedures and therapies. People from all over the world come here. So you want to evaluate the different health insurance policies out here. Again, everything is in Spanish. There's very little information about health insurance online in English. So you definitely want to at least talk to someone that can explain these things to you, even help you fill out paperwork. I pay about $1,200 per year for the best health insurance policy in Colombia that not only covers me for pretty much everything, on top of that, it covers me internationally when I travel for a certain amount and I have life insurance attached to that. The app, which really surprised me because we talked about how banks here, their apps and their systems are kind of outdated. For some reason, Suda has an amazing app where I can make an appointment at a click, a couple of clicks and I make an appointment with a hand expert, a knee expert to get an MRI done, to just get a health checkup done, to get my blood tested, whatever it need, I need, I have it at the palm of my hand and it gets done 
quickly and easily. I use Suda, but there are many others out here, so you definitely wanna do your research. Again, consult a professional or at least talk to a personal assistant. The one you have is kind of a high end, the best one you said. What about a more kind of affordable one? I've never had an affordable one here. <laughs> I've always had the high end one. Okay. Because it's only $1,200 for the whole year. $100 a month. How much so, would something like that cost where you're from, California? Thousands. Thousands, thousands of dollars. A month. Thousands of dollars. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. It is a very, very affordable place to come and get all your health problems taken care of. And even if you don't have health problems, maybe you want to fix your teeth. Maybe you want to fix your hair. You want to fix your, I don't Whatever know, it is, muscles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything you, you can. You can't get you muscles can, put in here. <laughs> you can fix yourself here. I know a lot of people, guys, don't be stuck in that mindset that Columbia is so far behind and they're going to take your kidneys and kill you here. This is a very advanced place and it's extremely affordable. If you're considering a move here, you already know all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But then again, you might not know people that have experienced this and we are those people that have gone through this and actually live here have health insurance here etc mobile service do you want to keep your number from the u.s do you get a new number here that really depends on what you need do you need to keep your mobile number from the u.s in case you're still conducting business with u.s clients well to keep your mobile phone number you could go through your carrier expand your plan to be able to get minutes out here and be able to get service out here usually that's not the most efficient one but it is a solution it's probably not a long-term solution but if you're here for a couple months and you just want to get started it's only about five ten $15 a month maximum. Yeah. What are some more long-term solutions? Yeah, for me, my long-term solution has been using Magic Jack. For example, Magic Jack, they give you a US phone number. You install the app on your phone and anytime someone calls me from the United States to that business number, my phone rings here as long as I have internet. And I always have internet because I have a phone plan here with unlimited data basically so that's been my long-term solution i've also used skype you can get your own phone number through skype or a 1-800 number through skype if you do run a business and you need an 800 number i've also used google phone you can get a phone number through there and minutes there are plenty of options so those are the more long-term solutions for someone who wants to keep their us phone number but if you don't need the number like i didn't have any use for my aussie number so i just like i'll get a new number here i went to just a corner store you can ask someone there you can even google translate it's not that hard just put in hey i want a mobile phone service and if you find a sign outside one of these little tiendas or little shops that says claro that's the one i use they can actually set up the service there for you. You get a SIM card, you get a Colombian number, and each month you can top it up with X amount of money. Right. I just do prepaid. So right now, every month I put in 40,000 pesos, Colombian pesos into my phone. That's about 10 US dollars. And with that $10, I get about 12 gigabytes of data, plus calls and plus messages included. And I know my girlfriend has a long-term plan, I think it's about six months, and she gets the same, maybe 12 gig, but she gets it for half the price. So very affordable here, right. many options, just decide which one's the best for you. If you have an iPhone, if you have the newest iPhone, you've got the eSIM, you can also get the eSIM installed here. If you're here for long term, that makes sense. You get the eSIM out here and you could get the prepaid plan or the post play plan. If you do have that eSIM, you wanna make sure to talk to your provider where you bought your phone. Usually it's through the store, it's not through the actual provider, for them to unlock the phone. For anyone that doesn't know, unlock means that usually when you get a mobile phone through your service provider, they only want you just stay with them. Right. So they lock your phone so that you can't put any other SIM cards in there. Right. So you need to go there, they'll do some programming and then open it up to receive SIM cards from anyone. Number seven, mailboxes. If you are still receiving mail in the United States, consider a virtual mailbox. The one that I use receives my mail, scans all my mail and sends it to my email. Ooh. If I need something physical, they'll send it out here. But I don't think I've had anything physical sent here in a while, only when my credit cards renewed, I had that sent, but basically that's it. Is that a monthly expense or yearly? How do you pay Yeah, you pay monthly. I, I pay monthly, it's it's not costly. I pay about $14 per ah, month. That's yeah, really it's, good. It's, and they it's really cheap. Take your mail, scan it and send it to you? Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> idea. The next thing might be shipping your things. What if you have a lot of stuff? Maybe you want to ship some furniture, electronics. We were talking before and Andy said one of his friends is a DJ or music producer. Right. And he needs to work over here. So he's not going to come here and buy everything again. To ship those kind of things, what would you do? You definitely want to go through an international moving company or an international shipping company that you'll get insurance in case something is lost. On these type of things, you don't want to cut corners. I've seen people cut corners. For example, for computer or electronics and even for furniture because some people want to move their entire house out here because they have a property lined up, etc. 
and something is lost, they can't recover it and they didn't mark it down, so it's not insured. Definitely wanna be careful with the things that you can't bring on your carry-on or with you in your luggage as you're traveling down here. But yeah, the solution has been to hire a professional moving company, international moving company. And another thing we wanna to touch on is that as advanced as Columbia is, there's just some things in terms of importing that's really gonna hit you in the wallet. Right. For example, me, I am a professional videographer, so often I need to upgrade my camera gear, but yeah. it's just not affordable and the options are not that great here. You can't really find the newest and nicest things. Yeah. And if you can, they're marked up a lot. So for example, if you buy a computer that's maybe $1,000 in the US, you have to pay an import tax, which can sometimes be 30, 40%. You can see how immediately that can jack up like $400 onto the cost of your computer. Best option would be to buy all your things from the US and then bring them here, especially electronics. For example, the latest and greatest things you're not gonna find, you'll find computers, you'll find your PlayStation, your Xbox out here. But if you want to get some more advanced equipment or specific parts, if you already have the stuff and you're considering selling it before moving out here, you might wanna keep it and bring it here because you're not gonna be able to find it very easily here. The taxation limit is $200. $200 so if yeah. you send anything under $200, it's fine, but yeah. over 200, they're gonna start hitting with all types of import fees. On that note, some of the things that you definitely wanna bring over if you're coming, for example, from Europe. In the United States, you're okay, but for example, converters for your devices, you definitely wanna just bring those if you already have them. You can find them here, but why go through the hassle of going to the hardware store or uh, home center to find those converters? You can find them, but it's just best if you already have them in your bag. For anyone that doesn't know, the plugs, PowerPoints here are US, same as the US, yeah. but they're not the same as Europe and no. they're not the same as Australia. Right. And another thing is notify everybody that you're going to Colombia, your bank, your credit card company. One thing that's happened to me guys is that I haven't told my bank that I'm, or my credit card company that I'm going somewhere. <laughs> and then I get somewhere and I try and use my credit card and they think it's fraud. They lock it and immediately. Lock and it. then I got to do all types of phone calls and spend many hours to get it on again. To save yourself all those problems, just notify all these types of companies that you are in fact going overseas. The next thing on the checklist is really gonna be an absolute game changer when you get here. If you wanna live like us, connect with the locals, maybe date some local girls. I don't know why I'm pointing maybe, at you. Yeah, exactly. um, my girlfriend's Colombian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> date some local girls, find some you know, local deals, deal with the local real estate agents, get the best deals. You need to know Spanish, okay? That's something you can start working on immediately from wherever you are. As you dream about your life in Medellin, you can start working today. The best way to do that, well, I'm gonna tell you about my journey and how I would recommend everybody do this. First of all, if any one of you has Duolingo, delete that shit immediately. <laughs> because it is useless. Get Babbel. Babbel is an app which different to Duolingo, instead of just teaching you random words that you may never use and random phrases like, I like to swim in the pool with my cat, it will teach you actual things for your goal. So it asks you questions when you first sign up, like, hey, why do you wanna learn Spanish? Conversational, which country are you going to? What's your level now? It will actually teach you things you need to know to survive in everyday life in the area that you're going. I used it when I was in Brazil to learn Portuguese and it helped me through there because I told it, I'm gonna be here for three months, just tell me the basic stuff and it taught me that. Start with Babbel, there you'll learn all your conjugations and past tense, present tense, grammar and all the basic things. And once you learn that and you can kind of read some sentences and understand, you wanna to move towards listening and speaking. So you would need to get a tutor. So someone who lives in Colombia would be your best bet because if you guys don't know, Mexican Spanish to Cuban Spanish to Argentinian Spanish to Colombian, all different. Yeah. You could quite well learn Spanish in Mexico, come to the coast of Colombia and be like, what language is this? Yeah, this exactly. is completely different. There's some apps like italki. You can actually go there and you can say, I wanna find someone in Medellin and you can get lessons from them, cost you five to $10 for an hour. You can tell them your goals and they'll work with you in a syllabus to improve. There you'll get your speaking and listening skills. Those two together, if you get that, that's a huge way of really improving and getting ready for when you're here. In the Facebook groups for tourists and for expats living in Medellin, you'll find local tutors advertising their services. Usually that route is what I recommend to all my friends to come. On top of getting the app like Babbel, even if you're using Duolingo, whatever the case may be, 
Um, you yeah, you definitely don't want to use. Duolingo. I've I've tried it. It sucks. So even if you're using an app to learn Spanish, or even if you're taking online courses, you should contact a local tutor here because the beautiful thing is that you could do the virtual classes while you're in the U.S. or in whatever country you're in right now. And when you get here, you meet them in person, and you already have a friend here Absolutely. that already knows you. That's like a, a, a win-win. Yeah, you, then you got your Spanish tutor and your tour guide. And your tour guide, <laughs> and maybe even your future wife oh. or husband. <laughs> That's going to put you in a good standing of really immersing in the culture when you're here. And when you're here, something you might want to consider is joining up a Spanish school, one-on-one -on -one if you like, or a group class. And the benefit of the group class is that you're automatically going to meet some like-minded people who want to learn Spanish, and you can practice with them and push each other forward. And you've already got some friends that way too. You definitely want to do your research, especially if you're going for that student visa to figure out which ones are the ones that are the best and that also offer the student visa because not all of them do. So the next one we want to talk about guys is connecting with people. The Medellin Masterclass, 10 hours exclusive content that will help you decipher a lot of these things that we have talked about today in detail, depending on your needs. But you're not only getting 10 hours worth of content, you're also getting access to our community full of people that just like you want to live in Medellin or are living in Medellin, sharing ideas, sharing experiences. There's a community for you here and it's all positive, creating this amazing life that we've already created here for ourselves. We only take a limited amount of people into this class because it's very intense and it's very personal fill out the form by clicking the link below we'll evaluate set up a call and we'll see if we can work together enjoy our content make sure to hit the like button make sure to hit the subscribe button and we'll see you guys in medellin digital nomad life can sometimes be lonely because you're moving place to place and it's hard to meet people in your own tribe but medellin you told me this once i asked you actually i don't know if you remember or not I asked you, why do you stay in this city? Why you don't go to Mexico City or Rio or something like that? Do you remember what you told me? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, the community. The friendships that I have here, the people that I know here, both local and foreigners living here. Apart from my routine, I love my routine. I love my life here. I love the cost of living. Apart from that, it's the actual connections that I have here, which are deep friendships. I haven't been able to find that in any other country as I've traveled. And that's a huge thing that you can start working on even before you get to Medellin. There's actually a website that I wanna share with you guys. It's called MDE Community. It basically has something for everyone, no matter what your interests are. And even just general groups, if you just wanna make random friends from all walks of life. A whole list of things, for example, language exchange, dancing club, cooking club, arts and culture club, foodies club, music festivals, entrepreneurs, recreational sports, football, basketball, tennis, hiking, board games, yoga, everything. That's a large amount. And a quick disclaimer, this is not our group. This no. is not something that we're paid to talk about either. It's just a great resource that we found and use. And I've actually used it twice, just this week. This past weekend, I organized a tennis camp from some of these people I found on this group. We went away 45 minutes away from Medellin to a country club of sorts. We stayed there for the weekend. We know we had our meals, we trained tennis. It was really cool. Tomorrow, actually, I'm going to another area that I found from one of these groups where it's a bar and each week they have different activities like language exchange, blah, blah, blah. Tomorrow, I'm actually going to a trivia night, a Seinfeld oh, yeah. trivia night. Oh my God, you, I would win at that. You want to come? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh. Well, what time? Uh, 7.30. Uh, that would be fun. Yeah. I would I would probably win that. I've been watching every episode again, Yeah. so I'm yeah. good to go. But just things like that, you can find everything here, guys. Join up those groups, even before you come here. Just say, hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. I'll be here in three months, or I'll be here in a month. Anyone want to connect? And people are welcoming here. Definitely recommend that, guys. It's also going to make you feel that much more safe and comfortable. If you already know some people and you already have some friends even before you ever land here. Now let's talk about what clothes to bring. It gets hot here during the day. In the evening it cools down a bit but it's never cold enough to wear a large jacket no. or layer. So you definitely want to pack for warm climate but here are some of the things that you shouldn't really bring. Flip-flops. <laughs> Unless if you're gonna wear them in the house. There's no uh, beach here. Yeah, there's and no beach. It's a huge cultural thing that they hate flip-flops. If that's your main source of a shoe, <laughs> you're going to have to invest in some tennis shoes. Let's talk about these cultural differences in clothing a little bit. I want to illustrate that with a story, okay? I was having a lesson with my tennis coach. It was about 40 degrees. What's that in Fahrenheit? 100 degrees. I was there in shorts and a singlet and he was there in pants. <laughs> I was like, mate, what the, what the, what are you wearing pants for? He's like, because it's professional. And I said, you never wear shorts? He's like, yeah, but only in the beach. 
Ah. So that's an extreme example of it, but it yeah. kind of shows what they're about here. They don't walk on the street ever in shorts. You see them in shorts at the gym. Even if it's 30 degrees out, if they're out for a breakfast or even walking on the street, they're always in jeans, you know? It's yeah. kind of weird. Yeah, the only time will be maybe on a Sunday when they close down the main roads out here and people walk out and jog and do exercise, walk their pets. You'll see people in shorts, but during the week, it's very rare that you see a Colombian wearing shorts even if they're nice shorts i wear shorts because mm. i'm not I'm, I'm colombian but i was raised in california <laughs> yeah. i wear shorts but i never wear board shorts and flip-flops although that's what i grew up with in in southern california out here i wear usually jeans even if it's a hot day and uh, i'm always presentable guys i'm from australia we wear board shorts and no shoes to the mcdonald's to the supermarket to university that's so, a no-no here <laughs> absolutely not make sure you pack a good pair of jeans a couple of pair of pants because you'll use that a lot here and one thing about medellin that i haven't seen really in any other city is a city of microclimates we're in poblado usually it's pretty hot but if you go like i said 45 minutes away freezing yeah and uh, yeah it's freezing yeah <laughs> you will need a jacket yeah. there you know yeah. depending on where you live yeah. if you're going to be living up in the hills it is going to be cold it's, at it's night cold, yeah if you're going to be living uh, closer to sea level, I guess, that you are going to be hotter. On top of that, Medellin has a lot of great clothing. So mm -hmm. you don't need to pack a lot if you do plan on buying clothes here. You'll find great clothing as long as you're not a giant like me where I can't really find pants my length a, a lot of the times and shoes. I'm a size 13 in US. I think in most stores you'll find up to a size 11. Problems of being a giant, huh? Yeah. Six foot, medium, Size 10. You're perfect. All the time. Yeah. All good. <laughs> I envy you, literally, because they have it's such nice easy. things out here. Everything medium fits me off and, the right. And if it's made here, it's cheaper. Yeah. And, and it's great quality, too. Mm. And you could get some of the greatest knockoffs, too, like the like Air Force Ones that look just like Air Force Ones. And they cost a fraction of the cost. Yeah. Bring t-shirts, collared shirts, bring jeans, and bring a couple of jackets if you want to get away to the mountains and things like that. Because you will want to do that. There's many amazing little towns and getaway spots very close to the city but we'll talk about that in another video let's move on to the next one which is modes of transport andrew my favorite mode of transportation in the city is uber uber works really well here they're safe and reliable there are a couple others like dd in driver and even taxi apps you can use those if you want to save more money i usually go with the uber comforts because they're bigger they've got air conditioning for some reason taxi cabs here don't use air conditioning and some of the cheaper ubers the smaller ones those drivers don't use Use air conditioning I've been told that they think that the battery is gonna drain <laughs> if they use their air conditioning too much it will cost more petrol that's why they don't yeah, use and it. petrol mm. I've, I've heard uh, all the excuses <laughs> we go slower we can't go up hills <laughs> uh, I've heard every excuse in the world for me to suffer so that's why I always get the uber yeah. comfort which is a usually a bigger mo more modern car with air conditioning download these apps before you get here guys you're gonna use them immediately when you get to the airport because yeah. you'll get to the airport you use an uber uber will cost you about 90,000 which is like 20 bucks to get to the city of Medellin. Uber is the one I use every single day. To go maybe five minutes, you might pay a dollar. Half an hour, you might pay five dollars. Everything is cheap. You yeah. hardly ever paying more than five dollars to go anywhere within the city of Medellin. Another app that I use is called InDriver. This is quite an interesting system. I've never seen this anywhere else, but you put in the destination, but then you put in what you want to pay. So I might say I want to go from my place to Andrew's place. I say 10,000 pesos. And then people will do some bidding. Someone will say 12, someone will say 11, someone will say blah, blah. And also show you how far away each of these people are. And then you can select which one you want. Yeah. It's so like an eBay for your ride. It's like an eBay, eBay ride. for yeah. your ride. You're so selling your ride. If you download those two, Uber and InDriver, you're covered, you're all good. But that's for ride sharing apps. How ride else can you apps. get around? My favorite, like for example, when I come to and from the airport or longer drives, I have a private driver. He speaks English. He's also registered with the Board of Tourism. So he's a legit transportation company anytime someone comes in either a friend or family member from the airport that's the person that picks him up he's got a big car he helps them get their their luggage and stuff and then on top of that he also does little tours like for example our friend that we met that we played chess with the other day mm -hmm. him and his wife they went out and did a little tour to go see some of the viewpoints around the city so he took the whole day drove him around he speaks english so he's telling them a little bit about the history of each point. And then they went and had dinner. Then he drove them back. And it's relatively cheap if you're coming from a country where you spend dollars, euros, etc. And also, if you guys don't know, Medellin is very proud of one thing. No, not reggaeton. The metro system. It's the only city in the whole of the country that has a metro, a train system. Yeah. 
It's Do you super, recommend that? The Metro system is awesome. Again, I've been here 13 years, and when I first got here, I didn't have any money, so I used the Metro daily because I was teaching English downtown, and I lived in seven different neighborhoods here, so I always had to either take the Metro or a combination of the bus and the Metro. You may want to take a ride on the Metro. That's the best way to discover the city. Mm -hmm. Go from north to south, east and west, all over during the day. Get out at different spots. Check out the city. I mean, it costs you... It's Pennies on the dollar, really. It's to, like to, yeah. 50 cents to get It's like 50 cents to mm -hmm. get on the Metro. You can even get a little card and, and top it off with money so that you don't have to have cash. And you can get to a lot of key points in the city. It's not my main mode of transportation, but when someone comes here for the first time, for example, my dad, when he visits here, he lives in Southern California where he drives everywhere in his own car. He ha finds it so refreshing that he can literally walk down the hill here to the Metro station and be downtown in 10 minutes and we're in a completely way different environment. We just talked about arriving at the airport. What about bringing local currency into the country? Do you need the local currency? Should you exchange at the airport? Should you get some before you come? What should you do? I tell people not to. If you've done your due diligence, you should have a card that will waive your ATM fees or even if you don't, it's not worth trying to exchange money in your own country to bring pesos in here. It's better to, that you get here, even if you have dollars to exchange the dollars here, you can get a pretty good exchange rate. But the best thing to do is just to pull out cash from the ATM. And as we said, you can get to the airport and immediately you can get an Uber. So you don't even need cash. Wait till you get here, go to an ATM, get cash out that way. Right. And always remember, don't carry big amounts of cash around. We talk about this in another video, which is coming. One of the things you don't wanna do is uh, being an easy target and walking around with a lot of cash is being an easy time. Right. And also one big tip guys, is when you're using the ATM, there's gonna be two options. One of the final screens will say, do you wanna accept the currency exchange rate of this ATM? There's accept and decline. You always want to decline, because if you decline, it'll revert back to the rate that your card is giving you. Otherwise, the ATM puts their own conversion rate, which is usually about five to 7% higher than the actual exchange rate. That brings us to the end of our checklist, guys. We are pretty confident that this will give you everything you need to know to ensure a seamless and stress-free transition into living here and building a new life in Medellin. If we have forgotten anything or you want some more information on a different topic, drop it in the comments. If we have enough comments, we might even do another video. Right. But we'll definitely be responding to all the comments that you guys leave us. We're happy to help out. We've helped many people move to Colombia and make that transition a lot smoother. So if that's you, make sure to click the link below and fill out the form and we'll get in touch with you. See you on the next video, guys.